uh, as discussed for the next about 10 to 15 minutes, I shall tell you something brief about what precautions you need to take. Lockdown is not the end of this problem. It is just the beginning of this problem. Our Prime Minister made a very wise decision in putting in the lockdown at a time when the number of cases were going up. And this has phenomenally blunted the curve, what we call as flattened the curve. So from a situation where it was going like this, we have now made it like this. But we have to understand that once the lockdown is lifted, we are going to see more number of cases. Though this is not going to be a deluge, this is going to be a trickle of cases coming in probably for the next three to four months at least. So we are looking at this peaking maybe in July or August and then settling down over the next three, four months. So at least for the next six months or so, we have to be prepared that this virus is going to be with us and cause a lot of damage. So with those words, I will tell you, I'm going to split my uh, talk in three sections. The first section is on what you need to do personally <coughs> at home to stay protected. Second, what about your offices? And third, what about you need to do with your laborers and on-site construction work? Now, our life as we lived is definitely changed. We are not going to go back to the lives we live. We have to accept the new normal. So what are the things we need to do? Number one, whenever you cough or sneeze, you have to cover your face and mouth with an elbow so that you don't splatter the droplets. This is a virus which is spread through the droplets, which means through the sali, HL, what comes out of your mouth that carries the virus and goes about three to six feet. So you have to use what is called cough etiquette or sneeze etiquette, or you cover your face with tissue, your mouth, you dispose the tissue and wash your hands. Second, you need to wash your hands frequently because other than directly spreading from one person to another, if the droplets fall on a surface, I touch the surface and take my hand near my face or nose, that is how it spreads. So I need to wash my hands frequently. So even if I touch something, my hands are clean after that. Number three, always avoid taking your hands near your face as much as possible. The more we take our hands, yes, I can see several people urgently <laughs> putting their hands, but the, the less we take our hands near our face, the better for us, especially in public spaces. The fourth is, it is now recommended that Everybody stay at least three to six feet, six feet away from your uh, whoever next to you, especially in public. It is difficult at home, but you need to maintain physical distancing when you are in public because we've seen that there are a lot of asymptomatic carriers, people who don't have symptoms but can transmit the virus. So by staying away, even if somebody coughs or talks or sneezes, you are protected. And all of us should wear a mask. If I'm a healthcare worker, I need to wear a surgical mask. If I'm an ICU doctor, I need to wear an N95 mask. But for the public, they don't need an N95. Routinely, they don't need a surgical mask. They need to wear a double layered cloth mask. And anybody, when you're going out in public, it is now strongly recommended. In fact, you are urged to wear a two layered surgical, two layered cotton mask, which you can wash and reuse at home. Apart from this, the only other aspect is surface disinfection, especially in public spaces where people touch things a lot, whether it's a doorknob, whether it's a telephone in your office, whatever you need to clean them up on a regular basis. This has to become a routine. If it is a surface, a simple bleach, household bleach is good enough. If it may be corroded, you can use an alcohol solution like Basilol to clean, for example, even your cell phones require cleaning. When we take our cell phones, we leave it out in all places and then take it and put it near our ear and nose. That can increase the risk of infection. All this has to be kept in mind as far as our responsibilities go. We also need to protect our elderly people. We have seen that this infection causes more harm, complications and even death if you're over the age of 65. So parents living at home, elderly people, make sure that especially these are protected, they stay at home as much as possible and avoid public spaces and maintain physical distancing. The next, what do you do if you have a fever or a cough? At this point, everybody is paranoid. When you have a sore throat, when you have a little fever, 99, you start panicking. Right now, the only suggestion is stay at home, make sure that you are physically distanced from everybody else, observe for two to three days. If the fever persists, you need to speak to a doctor, fix an appointment, and go and see him on an appointment so that you don't wait in a common hall. The testing, whether it is needed or not, the doctor will uh, decide. So don't panic. Please remember that 80% of people have very mild infection. 20% may need hospitalization. And 5% may end up in the ICU 
and less than 1% may die. So most of us, we should come through without any problem, even if we have an infection. The second part of my talk, I'm going to talk about what you need to do probably in your offices. Your offices are again public places where there are a lot of people coming in and going. As far as possible, if you can institute a work from home procedure where you're able to do most of your work at home, get it done at home. The less you go to a common place or a, a, you know, an office, the better. But if you need to work from home, ensure that your communication channels are very well done and you touch base with everybody because people tend to get isolated and depressed during times like this. So your communication channels, the manager should be responsible for communicating with all the staff if they are working from home. If you are working out of a facility, for example, as a doctor, I can't work from home. So if I need to go, if I need to go to my clinic or if you have your offices, ensure that before the lockdown is lifted, you clean the place up. You ensure that spacing is done in, the, in your office. That is the seating may be modified so that two people don't sit next to each other. You have to block off a middle chair. You need to arrange the seatings in a manner that people are distanced even if they come back to work. You also need to reorganize. You need to provide, uh, you know, make provisions for alcohol sanitizer to be left in all places so that people can frequently use it or access to hand washing could also be made. Ensure that doors, avoid doors which need to be pulled because when you push, you can use your elbow and push the door, but pull when you use your hand, you again contaminate your hand. So you may need to look at some infrastructure modifications if there are a lot of doors in your office and also ensure that you have a visitor's policy in your office, minimize the number of visitors. About staff coming into your office, it is recommended probably you screen the staff. You can use the uh, thermal gun if anybody is having fever, probably they need to be assessed before they are let into the office because at least for the next three, four months, you should be a little careful. If in your office, if you have a number of employees, you need to have in place an occupational health or an occupational medical team who will advise mainly about educating staff, you know, how they need to use hand hygiene, how they need to use probably namaste instead of hand, in, instead of uh, shaking hands, the importance of cough etiquette, the importance of how to use the elevator. When you use the elevators, if all of you are going to use your finger, there is a risk that you may transmit infection. Similarly, if there is biometrics, you may need to change the biometrics because when you touch that area, somebody has coughed and touched the area, there is a risk of infection. So you may need to look at alternatives. You also need to define roles and responsibilities for your various staff so that in case, for example, some you know, employee, employee comes in, he has a fever, you shouldn't panic. You know, you should know what the process is. There should be a sick bay where he can be assessed or, you know, you can speak to a doctor, whatever. Things like this should be done. And you should also have a policy for what we call environmental disinfection. That is how you clean your chairs, your tables, how you clean your telephones, how you clean your doorknobs, how often do you clean. There should be a system for all of this. Apart from this, Avoid meetings where a lot of people congregate, whichever is possible online, virtual meetings should be done. And if you have to have meetings, ensure that you have people physically distanced so that there is no crowding of people even in a meeting hall. And lastly, travel, people who travel a lot, you need to rethink this. If it can be accomplished by a video call or a telephone call, avoid the travel because travel also increases the risk to everyone. And what I'm telling is probably for the next three to six months. So that is the second part of my talk. The third part of my talk concerns your site, on-site construction, where, as Mr. Sridharan said, there are a lot of people working. It could be anywhere from 50 people to 500 people. What do you do? The first step is to educate, educate, educate. You should tell them what this virus is, what problems it can cause, how it spreads, and how they need to protect. Because I see a lot of discontent, disgruntlement about the current lockdown situation. People don't understand the severity of what can happen you know these people don't look at what is happening in the us or italy or spain what deaths are happening and how everybody is suffering to them you know when you ask them stay at home it is very difficult and they want to go out and have some fun especially the younger people so you need to educate them about the severity of the problem when you have or when you establish a camp you also need to ensure that there is physical distancing you don't have five people or eight people staying in one room if you need to have eight people staying, you need to have a huge dormitory with at least six feet gap between people who sleep. These are all things I think you need to start. I know this will increase the expenses. This will cause a lot of difficulty, but 
we are looking at a future where physical distancing is going to be the norm. Transport, they cannot, you cannot transport 40 people in a bus. You probably need to keep alternate chairs vacant so that they are not physically close to each other. You may have to resolve in daily temperature screening of these people because these are uneducated people, quite a lot of these migrant laborers. So checking the temperature to ensure that if they are sick, they don't come in and spread the infection to others may need to be done. They may have to be encouraged to wear masks when they are working close to each other in the public. They need to be encouraged or told about hand washing, mainly so that and avoid taking hands near the face. Especially if they are sick people, they shouldn't be transmitting it to others. And importantly, have regular health checkups to assess how healthy they are. Lastly, you also need to look at ways to stagger the crowds. So if there is a lunch break, you have a lunch break instead of one to two for everybody, you stagger it from say 11.30 to 3.30 where you send the people in batches so that they don't sit all sit around, you know, 50 people together and have lunch. You have physical distancing and a staggered lunch will prevent the accumulation of people during lunchtime. So these are few things which I wanted to tell you. You need to be safe, you need to educate them and you need to ensure that they stay safe because one or two of them come down, there's a possibility the entire lot may become infected. This is an infection which none of us have suffered from before. All of us are susceptible. We can all get the infection, but the risk of running into complications is related to how old we are or whether we are having underlying diabetes or high blood pressure or heart disease. So it is important we stay safe. The lifting of the lockdown doesn't mean that we go back to normal. We need to have a lot of changes in our life if we are going to face this virus and get over it in time.